Good evening, everyone, from A Case of Living again. I did a video earlier about butterfly effect and how we can have our best life possible in uh, the high, live our highest timeline in spite of it. And I did promise to talk about some twin flame stuff, but I was kind of in a hurry and I did want to keep the video short. And so I'm just now getting um, around to addressing the twin flame issue, which did come up in the video. And so um, that's what I wanted to do now is address twin flame and how twin flame can well, how in the world do you handle butterfly effect? How do you handle the fact that your um, your twin is not coming into vibrational frequency? It is their right not to. We do not manifest against that, first and foremost. Do you want someone manifesting, manipulating you energetically? Of course not. That is not what we're here to do. Power being empowered, being in our power, does not mean we use our energy to get others to do what we want them to do. It means we show up in our correct frequency, in our energy, in the fullness of our energy, in our frequency, in the correct power. We put that frequency out. We attract to us a resonant frequency. Now, absolutely, if our twin is here, it should be our twin, no doubt about it. But if our twin has not come up to the level of consciousness, and again, level of consciousness, when I say up to, that doesn't mean that that makes us better than them. Doctors and lawyers can be in different levels of consciousness, yet they're both highly educated people. So a doctor needing to come up to the level of consciousness of a lawyer and vice versa it does not mean that one is better than the other, obviously. So it just means you're in a different level of consciousness. You're thinking in a different level of consciousness than they are. Now, most of the time we are talking 5D versus 3D thinking. That is true. Most of the time with Twin Flame, we are talking about one who has done the healing work, the releasing, progressing all of that. But again, that does not, that is not a morality or a judgmental thing whatsoever. We do it when we do it. We accept it when we accept it. Or we don't. We've all been in different levels of consciousness. And we all want to be accepted for whatever level of consciousness we're in without judgment. And therefore, that is the energy we need to be putting out or we will attract people in who will judge us for the level of consciousness we're in. If you go to judging your twin because, well, they're just not in this high level of consciousness as I am, well, then you're going to attract people around you who are like, yeah, well, and you're just not in this high level of consciousness as I am. We do not judge other people. The energy we put out is the energy we will get back. So you accept. I don't like it. You're honest with yourself. You feel your feels. I don't like it. My heart knows the story. And I don't like it. But it is what it is. And I accept that it's their sovereignty of self. And it is not my place to manipulate their energy. I do not want my energy manipulated. Therefore, I will respect their energy. And that is the energy I will put out. And I will pull my energy from that situation. Doesn't mean you have to necessarily pull being their friend. Maybe you have to, to be able to handle the situation that's going to be individualized. But I will pull myself from that energetically, however I need to. Call my energy to myself. And I will go on down my timeline and manifest the best life for myself as possible. And I will attract to myself that which is in alignment with me. That is what we talked about earlier. And that is what I'm telling you as a twin flame. We had halite earlier. Soft is not a word usually used to describe a stone. Again, from the illustrated crystallary. Shh, she whispers. Highlight to your monkey mind. Come back to the center, to the stillness. 
It's not that Hal Lott wants you to curl up into bed with a cup, cup of chamomile tea, chamomile tea and call your day done. Quite the opposite. Hal Lott knows that your projects, adventures, conversations, and relationships will slide into flow and synchronicity. They'll all get into frequency. When you are unruffled, when you yourself get back into frequency, feel your feels, get it back into frequency. And by all means, it's okay to feel your feels. It's okay to feel your feels. It's what we do when we're feeling our feels that matters. A two-year-old feels their feels and act like a two-year-old. A 52-year-old feels her feels. She doesn't need to act like a two-year-old. Feel your feels and then get back into frequency. You are the foundation. You're your foundation. You're your foundation. Come from your center, undistracted by excess aggravation and random irritations. Other people not being in frequency. Because this is where your power lies. I talked about the power earlier. It's where your frequency is. It's where your manifesting ability is. There's a still point within you. Center. Allow yourself to sink into it. Very much a twin flame card, isn't it? When I saw it, that's the first thing I thought of. There's another card in the um, Metatron deck where there's, um, I'm sorry, I did a, a thing on it earlier this week. Um, I think last weekend even where I, it had been channeled that uh, somebody or some buddies felt like they were defenseless over <laughs> an apology they needed to give or apologies that need to be given or talks that needed to be held. Um, and they had no leg to stand on. But uh, and I said, most most people don't expect that just show up in different energy. And it showed the trees coming up and they were mirroring one another. You're your own foundation. When things are split. Maybe they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Maybe your story partner. It's not coming into frequency. You're your own foundation. Stay in the energy of unconditional love. Feel your divine potential. Feel your destiny. Be all you can be. Your, your story is written. You're living from your intuition. You're living fifth dimensionally. You're doing everything from a place of unconditional love. Pulling your energy back to you. And you're staying in vibrational frequency. Look at the brightness of that car. This is the epitome of how I like to feel, folks. When we're in frequency, nothing, we're grounded so that nothing can pull us out of frequency. We keep our energetic field intact. We don't let things around us to pull us out of frequency. We don't just surround ourselves with unicorns and transcendent love. We realize it's our responsibility to stay away from things that are going to pull us out of frequency. People, the people that we were around, we don't go around those. They're not in resonance with us. You get around non-resonant energies, resonant energies, and before long, they're pulling on you and pull you out. Protons, electrons, neutrons, when they start getting around protons, electrons, neutrons that are not in resonant energy with them, one set or the other are going to start getting chaotic. You don't want that to be you. So you stay in frequency. Don't go around those. Or when you do go around those, be sure that you are fortified energetically and you don't stay any longer than you are able to. And you stay in your frequency and you be transparent with people. You do your self-care. You be the best you that you can be. You treat yourself that way. How do I want to be treated? Because that's your frequency. That's your intuition. 
And then you put that energy out and you're transparent. This is me. This is how I show up. The energy goes out and you attract back like-minded people, like energy. Because you're an angel of love. You're an unconditional love. This bright, sunshiny, golden, wise, with all the colors of the light spectrum. Therefore, all the high vibrational energies are there. And know that you're loved. You know you're loved because you're in the vibrational frequency of unconditional love. You're doing it for yourself first. You know, my lights are going nuts, I know. You're doing it for yourself first. And then you're putting it out to the world. So you're damn sure getting it back. And you surrender to the sweetness of it. That may be kind of bittersweet because, yes, you know, your twin is here and they're not in frequency, but that's okay. We come to the point where we realize with all things, if it's not in frequency with, with us, it's not our best hut and highest good nor theirs. And we certainly care about our twin. And we don't want something that's not good for them. And if we're not in frequency with one another, we're not good for them. What is going on right now, and it's not just with twin flame, it's with all divine feminine, divine masculine energy. The divine feminine for a good bit now, the 60s before have been fighting the patriarchal mindset saying hold on a second we are not objects we are people we're equals and the way the patriarchal mindset works is not the way the world is supposed to be that's divine feminine energy that has been pulling the world to a softer, gentler way of being. No, it went a little too far at one point. Don't open the door for me, et cetera, et cetera. Had to come back to center. Now we're to the point where divine masculines are becoming transcendent too. They're coming to 5D thinking. Let all that go. Forgive everything. Pull my energy to myself. How do I want to feel, be, and experience? I'm going to put that energy out. I'm going to live in flow. And they've had just as long as the divine feminine to figure this out. But they didn't use that time to figure it out because they weren't in that frequency yet. Some of them did, but not all. So what we're feeling cosmically is their energy is coming up to 5D and they're pulling toward their divine feminines but they're getting close and they're like okay so here i am and i know i'm supposed to be different and the divine feminines are like okay this is me this is me this is how i show up and the divine masculine is like oh okay well i'm not sure what my role is anymore so what do you want me to be I'm not saying all, I'm of course using some hyperbole here, but y'all get my drift. And the divine feminine, some of them are jumping on the bandwagon and say, well, this is what I want you to be. Well, that's what the patriarchal mindset did to the divine feminine. They told us what to be. That is not what we do. Divine masculine, just like the divine feminine is showing up and saying, this is me. You are to show up and say, and this is me. And you're to have a one plus one equals three, where in the relationship, two of you figure out what that means. And then you are exponential in vibrational frequency because there's not one frequency or two frequencies coming together to be one, or even just two frequencies. There's three frequencies now working harmoniously, building a life together. So your independent life is higher vibrational 
because you have this other person cheering you on to shine and you're shining with them. And the same thing is happening. And you mirror one another, whether you're twin flame or not, you're drawn together. So you're great mirrors for one another. And this is job relationships, friendships. Okay. Love relationships and twin flame. So these divine masculines that are coming too far over and saying, I, I, I get it. I'm, I'm surrendering to, to the Venus energy here. I'm surrendering to the sweetness. I want pleasure and joy. <laughs> I, I want this. What do you want me to be? <laughs> no, that's too far. That's like, can't open the door. You can't open the door for the, for me. Yes, you can open the door for me. We have to, we have to define for ourselves mutual respect. The masculine doesn't tell the feminine. The feminine doesn't tell the masculine. And first, within ourselves, we have to balance this energy within ourselves first, because divine feminine, divine masculine energy is within each one of us. Your predominant energy may have nothing to do with what your gender is. I'm a girly girl, folks, but predominantly astrologically my my natal chart says I'm, I'm a divine masculine and if you know me in a work environment you'd agree I was known as Napoleon <laughs> I am a take charge get things done person I don't dilly dally I make decisions and I move which is why this morning's reading fit me perfectly I'm a hermit for as long as I need to hermit I figure things out and then I make a decision and I go I don't but I do. I am a calculated risk taker. That's how I got yesterday's title is my old boss is what she used to call me. When I first took the job, I was a brand new RN when I became a director of nursing. I'd been in, I'd six months. I became a director of nursing and I, I felt totally inadequate for the job. Okay. And she's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you think you're not a risk taker? You think you're not bold? Of course you are. She said, the thing is, you don't just go do stupid shit. You think it through. You look things over, but then you move. You are a calculated risk taker. And that's what, that's what a leader is. Why do you think we hired you? <laughs> and then, and that stuck with me and stuck with me. And so that's where yesterday's title came from. And so I got the job as they saw in me that I was a calculated risk taker. You don't just jump. You look at the facts. You take in the data. Then you move. You don't stand still either. You know that you cannot stand still. The situation is not standing still, so you don't stand still. Why do you think we hired you? So, divine masculines, divine feminines. The energy is within each one of us, and we have to balance that. And then as relationships are coming together, whether it's at work, within families, friends, or within love relationships and within twin flames, the masculine and feminine dominant energy in the relationship, I personally think I show up as a feminine. I have some very strong masculine traits, of course. I am a decision maker and an action taker, et cetera, et cetera. But I also, I, I prefer, I prefer the nurturing role. I prefer to be a support and nurturing person, but I, I definitely want mutual respect and I, I definitely have no trouble making decisions, that's for sure. So, but we have to show up. This is who I am. This is who I am. And we have to make these decisions together, but we have to be in frequency. We have to both be thinking 5D to do that. This is 5D thinking. So if your twin is not thinking 5D, they're going to have enthusiasm for you. And I don't have to tell you that, you know, wands represent um, enthusiasm and they represent enthusiasm. Well, of course, they're going to be enthusiastic about you. They're attracted to you. But we have to be enthusiastic about our life, ourselves. First and foremost, this is the reading I got when I got home to do this. Yes, they're going to be enthusiastic about us, but they may not get in frequency. 
We have to be enthusiastic about our own life. We're being queen of swords energy with them and with us. We're honest with ourselves, truthful, candid, protective of our own energy. We maintain our energy field. That doesn't mean that we're not open to them, but it's energy for energy. We don't let them pull us out of frequency. We're not doing them any favors if we do. You see, if they get us in their lives out of frequency, it's not going to be the relationship it's meant to be. We're not being difficult or bitches or whatever, but holding frequency and saying, no, this is the frequency of the relationship. We're, we're being leaders. We're saying we are twin flame. We are a 5D couple. This is a beautiful, strong, dynamic relationship, exponential in this frequency, not that one. So we're not doing any favors by not being true to ourselves. She, look how open she is. She's, she's holding her hand out, come, come. But I've got my sword here. I, I'm not pointing it at you, but if you try to pull me out of frequency, if you try to with me, if you think I'm stupid, if you think you can just hurt me and hurt me and hurt me, if you think you can mess with me, you're wrong. I'm not weak. I'm open. I'm transparent. I love you. But I love myself. And if I don't stand in my frequency, you don't want me anyway. Because our relationship is not going to be a good one. I'm not going to be happy. And you're not going to be happy because what you're really drawn to is this me. I wrote a song, I'm everything you're looking for and all of a sudden I wasn't anymore. And that has been the epitome of all of my relationships. These people fall for me in my frequency. But the truth is they want my energy, but they don't want who I really am because this is too strong for them. It's too much. I'm sorry. As my guides told me, you will not settle. No, I won't. Take me in my frequency or you don't get me. Because you don't want me. Because I'm going to be miserable. And I won't stay. So I'm not going to do that. And what we've got going on is we've got the masculine here. Not in king energy, but in knight energy. So he hasn't, hasn't completely made it yet to 5D. And he's got his cup. He knows he loves her. He knows he does. Or she knows he lo that she loves him or which whatever. The genders don't matter. Going the other way. Yep. I'm attracted to that person. <laughs> I want to be with that person. I know I do. Can't do it. Don't know why I can't do it. I just can't. And so I'm going this way. Yep. They're back there. Yep, I feel the draw. I may go back there for a little bit. <laughs> but no, she won't put up with it anymore. She's done with that or he's done with that. No more yo-yo and no more back and forth. They're not going to do the energy back and forth game anymore. They're through with it. So here I am with my cup. I'm going this way. And the queen of swords. She keeps moving too. Now, ideally, the twins, they're moving together with this chariot. Remember, I told you this was a twin flame card. But whoever, if this is just, whichever one of them this is, moving on alone in 5D energy, it's balanced. In 3D, it's not. They haven't done the work. They haven't healed. They're still thinking in old patterns. They're still in societal programming. They're still with ancestral, with lineage issues. And again, this isn't they're bad or good. It's not that. It's a different way of being. And that way of being keeps people sick and stuck and unhappy. It's what causes dense energies that lead us into 
those type of situations in worse war, famine, child trafficking, dog eat dog. So keep moving forward. Now, the one that is in 3D is looking, well, I'm building, I'm still successful. I've, I've got my act together in lots of ways, but I'm missing this. And the one who's in 5D, I'm still building. And I'm aware that this is missing, but I'm attracting in other energies and I'm still going down my timeline. Doesn't mean I don't, I'm not aware but I'm still building and I'm going down my timeline. So maybe this is our night, come back now as a page. No, oh, I'll offer a couple of, see so, so if they'll take that. This is a page, page still very childlike. A page has not yet mastered 5D thinking. Or maybe this is you and your inner child and you've loved your inner child. And so you're going on down your timeline and you're doing great. Or maybe this is them with theirs starting to and starting to come into 5D thinking. But the one in 5D thinking is an empress energy. Fertile having success, creative. Um, what they're doing is coming to fruition. Um, they're creative, they're beautiful, their feminine energy is showing, they're in feminine, divine feminine energy, everything is flowing for them, okay? This is how they're being seen by their counterpart, by their twin. This is how they're being seen by the other people that they're working with, the other friends, the, the other people in their lives are being seen in this energy. Now, this could either be their twin, keeping all their, their swords, all their mental anguish, all their 3D thoughts, all their ruminating in their head, not letting anything go, and the lights went up, and their wounded inner child, and, and all bundled up, and they could be going the other direction from the Empress. or. It could be the Empress transitioning on all this taken care of, transitioning on this card's red kind of both ways to happiness. You see, this is a twin flame card. So it could be that this one is not going to get it because they're taking all of this with them and they're ruminating and it's keeping them from, they're leaving the Empress. They're not even looking at the Empress or backs to the Empress and they're headed, they're trying to find happiness, but they've got their head down. They can't see anything for all the swords because they're ruminating. They're still in their head. They're still doing 3D thinking. They haven't let things go. They haven't pulled their energy back to themselves. So they don't see. I'm missing out on the frequency I'm supposed to be in. I'm missing out on my happiness. I'm missing out on the sunshine. The Empress, she opted in the boat. She didn't have all those things. She, she's going to have her happiness. And the universe says, will fortune will turn as it turns. And it remains to be seen. What will happen with the twin flame energies? The universe isn't making anyone do anything. Yes, we wrote our stories. We took calculated risk. We reverse engineered them, but we're still here with this butterfly effect happening. We're still trying to come up out of these denser energies and we are unconditionally loving our shadow selves out of those energies. And it takes as long as it takes. Shadow self is not, so many people use that term and they're, it's like their dark side. No, shadow self is your former self, your past, what's behind you. And what's behind you is levels of consciousness you used to be in. See, you, you didn't know before. 
And so you made decisions before that caused you to have all these swords. Well, 5D thinking is, oh, wait, I don't have to have all these swords anymore. My empress is right there and we can have this. I just have to lay down the swords, call my energy back to myself and have a different perspective and build a one plus one equals three. But it does take both. The divine feminine energies have to be waiting for the divine masculine to come in and they have to accept them in that energy. They can't be, well, it took you long enough, about damn time, there can't be any of that. Or there, you can't take advantage of when they say, so what do you want me to be? And you start, well, this is what I want. No. Mutual respect. One plus one equals three. Both energies have to do it. If the divine feminine overtakes the divine masculine energy, then we just have the reverse of patriarchal mindset. We go to a matriarchal mindset. No, mutual respect. That's what we're here to build. Exponentially. That's what Twin Flame is here for. But until we get out of the dense energies and everyone is in 5D, it is the wheel of fortune as to whether or not it happens. Because we do not get to manipulate the other person into it. The man in the moon can look down and see. But we have to wait. But we cannot let ourselves be illusional or delusional about it. Waiting does not mean you put your life on hold. And hope to goodness that it happens. How long are you going to do that? You don't know how long your life is. You're supposed to go on with your divine potential. You're supposed to go on with your story. You're supposed to go on and be in the sunshine. You are your own foundation. You are an angel of love. Be an unconditional love. Know that you are loved. Love yourself. Surrender to the love. Venus energy. Pleasure. Joy. Make love to life. Be your true, authentic self. Go down your timeline. And if your twin flame, will there be another person that lights you up like your twin does? That if your twin came back around, you could say, no, I'm in a relationship. And I'm sorry, but you're too late. There are people who have walked away from twin flame because it's hurt too much and they're in relationships. So it, it happens. That needs to be a conscious choice you make, though. Be aware of that. Twin flame. I'm not telling you not to do it by any means. As a matter of fact, I understand if you do. I absolutely understand if you go ahead and, and you go down your timeline and you meet someone and they light you up and you decide, you know, you know I'm going to do this. I understand that. But you are making a conscious choice because this is another person and their emotions that you're messing with. You're making the conscious choice and pulling my energy from the twin for good. And I'm committing to this relationship. So when the twin comes back around, I do not let them pull me out of frequency. So, it is a very serious reading for Twin Flame. Very serious reading. I've told you all and told you all, I, I looked back over the stuff I did in February and I told you in February, I, I wasn't sure what to tell the twin who didn't know what to do because she was like, I, I, don't, I don't know how I could be with anybody else. Well, it's going to have to be, you are in your frequency. You're going down your timeline. Someone who is close enough to you in soulmate energy or parallel comes along and they light you up so much you're able to say, I can resist going back to the twin if the twin ever gets in frequency. And there are people who are able to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
because you have no guarantee and the universe says it's the wheel of fortune and it's unseen. If they're not in frequency, go on with your life. It's the wheel of fortune and it's unseen. Maybe it's them that comes down their timeline and maybe it's them. Maybe it is that them coming in. Maybe they turn that horse around and they come toward the queen of swords and they see that she's, yeah, come on. This is just me telling you the truth and being real with you. My sword is to keep myself in frequency with everybody. I'm not pointing it at you. I'm strong. Maybe you're even coming back as a king or even the emperor. Yes, I know the emperor is known as not really all that emotional sometimes, but just because somebody has emotional stability and doesn't wear their heart for everybody to see doesn't mean they're not emotional with their, with their intimate partners. So the emperor gets a bad name sometimes. So this is a reading for how butterfly effect can be still a high timeline for a twin flame. It's not all sunshines and roses. It's very practical. But I am very practical, folks. It is possible. It is doable. You can move down your timeline. It is possible. It is doable, that resonant energy, very high, high, highly resonant soulmate energy comes in and that you make that decision that, yes, this resonates enough. I'm not settling. That is the thing. Do not settle. Don't fall into 3D thinking. This is close enough. And pull yourself out of frequency. You will not be happy. Don't settle for something to tie you over until the twin maybe gets in frequency. That's not operating in integrity. You have to stay in your frequency. You have to be your authentic self. No, I'm not saying everyone does this perfectly. I'm not saying we're, we're ever going to do it perfectly. I'm saying this is, this is the more we do it, the easier it becomes. The more we do it, the more we all do it. And the less and less dense energies there are. So I hope this helps those who are twin flame and they want to know how to handle the butterfly effect, how to handle the fact that their twin is not in resonant energy with them. You keep going. You become the best you you can be. You stay in frequency. You hope that the twin gets in frequency, but if they don't, that's okay. You know in your heart that you're going to be all right. You keep believing, but you be all right if they don't come. And if you decide that that's a soulmate and that we resonate well enough and I'm going to be happy, then in your integrity, step into that relationship. Not, I'll do this until the twin is ready. No. Is that how you want to be treated? Of course not. Of course not. So, I told you all I would talk to Inflame, so I wanted to come back and do that. I hope this helps you all. Again, I know it's not sunshine, lollipops, and all of that stuff. But it's the truth, and it's practical everyday application, and it's what the energy says, too. You all have a great week. <laughs>